are. We are live here from the LPGA Ford Championship. I don't know why I said live, actually, because we're not. Well, kind of. <laughs> we're here with Lauren Coglin, LPGA professional golfer, and just stud out there. And really resilient, like one of the most resilient players out here. Yeah. I think I, I just want to I want to talk to you. I want you to share your story with everyone because golf is hard. Golf is very hard at times. It's very humbling and it can really beat you t- beat you down at yeah. times. So tell us your story. Yeah. How did you get into golf? Tell us everything. Yeah. So I started playing golf when I was probably about six or seven years old. My dad and my grandfather, pretty much all the men on my dad's side, my uncle's cousins, they love golf. And so that's kind of how I got started. Um, my dad traveled a good bit when I was a little. And so I, from what I, from what I'm told, you know, when he was home, I kind of was attached to, to his hip. And so he wanted to go play golf. So he started taking me with him. Mm-hmm. So as an excuse so that he could go. Yeah. And yeah, I just kind of fell in love with it. And I moved to Virginia when I was about 10 years old. And that's when I really got the bug. I think once we moved there, started out at the first tee and yeah, just kind of got, got bit by the bug. Um, I was not really highly recruited out of high school. Um, I wanted to go to a really big school. And so I ended up walking on at university of Virginia and redshirted my first year and stayed a fifth year and got my master's. And by my fifth year, I was an all American and just kind of was like, okay, I guess I need to go play Let's professional. Yeah. yeah. I kind of see how good I can get. Um, up until then, of course, you know, I dreamed of playing on the LPGA, mm-hmm. but never really thought of that I was good enough to go do it until I had that fifth year. And so I was like, okay, let's go see how good I can get. And went to Q school that summer after I graduated in 2016, got full Epson status for the next year. It was Symmetra tour at the time, played a full year on in 2018 out on, no, sorry, 2017 out on Epson and only made like $8,000. I think that year only made a couple, like probably like six or seven cuts, something like that. Went to my coach's office that summer. And I was like, I bawling, like want to quit. Can't do this. Yeah. She kind of convinced me to give it another go through Q school and was like, if you make it to finals, I'll caddy for you. And so this is uh, Kim Llewellyn, who's the head coach at Wake Forest now. And she was like, I'll caddy for you at finals if you make it. So I made it to finals and she caddied for me and ended up getting full LPGA status that year for 2018. So then I was a rookie (laughs) on LPGA in 2018. And again, kind of same thing, only made four cuts that year and just really got beat down again and wanted to quit again Uh (laughs) and my coach and my husband were like no like you you have what it takes you just you need to keep going so I went to Q school again got LPGA conditional LPGA status and so I kept going but I ended up that off season I started to really take the gym seriously and I had gained about 30 pounds from when I graduated college just was not working out was not taking care of myself Mm -hmm. was The grind of travel just really was hard. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's kind of when I started taking it seriously. And 2019, I ended up playing full year on Epson and ended up just missing out on my card. I finished 15th. And kind of after that, it was just onward and upward. Yeah. So let's go back to Mm -hmm. your husband and your coaches. Yeah. Like, keep telling you, like, no, we're not giving up yet. Yeah. You're going to do it again. You're going to do it again. What do you think it was that they really saw in you and your golf game that made them think, you know, try again, you're going to make it eventually just keep going. I think that they both just have this belief in me and they see the talent in my, my ball striking and my ability that I think is just there that I sometimes struggle to see myself and they were able just to communicate with me. Just like, no, you need to keep going. We're here for you. My husband played college football and you know, his whole thing was, I don't want you to to quit too early and regret it. He was like, I don't want you to just give up just because it's hard. And so he kind of just kept pushing me to know, just keep, keep, keep going. You know, eventually if you, if you don't make it, you don't make it, but yeah. you got to give it a go and you got to keep fighting. Yeah. And we're talking 2016 all the way to now. I mean, mm-hmm. it's just constant grind. Tell us about what happened with the heavy hitters in yeah. 2019. Like tell us that whole story. Cause that's actually new to me. 
the heavy hitters. Yeah, the heavy hitters with no laying up oh, and, yeah. and the DM that you got yeah. and sent. And, <laughs> and tell us what happened in 2019. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, I was a big fan of no laying up the podcast, but my husband more so. Like, yeah. I listened to the interviews because I... But I didn't listen to much of the like recaps or any of the yeah, other stuff yeah, that they yeah. did. Cause I mean, I enjoy golf, but it's my life as yeah. well. And so like I didn't need any more of the other stuff. Yeah. But I enjoyed listening to their pot, their interviews yeah. with the bigger names people. Cause it's nice hearing, you know, other people going through struggles who have come out on the other end. And yeah. so that was always really, you know, you can learn a lot from yeah. it. But my husband was like a big, big, big time into them. And so on Twitter that he saw that they were starting what they called the young hitters program, Uh which was basically they were sponsoring like five or six corn fairy guys. And one of the guys, Tron, tweeted out that they were thinking about doing LPJ or Smetra as well. And so my husband was like, you got to reach out to him. You got to reach out to him. So I messaged Tron in March right after the first Epson event of that year. And I lost in the playoff. And so I was like, okay, I was feeling really good. So I was like, okay. (laughs) <laughs> and so I sent him just like a message like telling him who I was I was a big fan like blah 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 and then in September <laughs> six months later he messaged me back and was just like circling back on this like let's do it wait six months later. six months later he hadn't responded at all up until then was like circling back on this like all he said was like let's do this <laughs> I still have the, the, the screenshot of it because it was so funny it was like <laughs> and so I was gonna be down and I was like oh my god this is great really cool but I was like I've never met any of them and I honestly didn't even realize that there was like five of them up until like probably midway through like uh-huh. the year after I really started paying attention to the other podcast yeah because all I really thought was Solly yeah yeah because <laughs> I was only listening to the interviews yeah. didn't realize that there was like five other people or four other people that were doing it too and so yeah I was going to be at the Symmetra Tour Championship which was in Daytona and I knew they kind of most of them were based out of Jacksonville I was like hey I'm going to be driving back up through Jacksonville after the Symmetra Tour Championship like let's meet and like talk mm-hmm. and so i met dj dj pihowski and then tron at a coffee shop in jacksonville and talked to him for like an hour and they're like yeah let's handshake let's do it and then <laughs> what does that even mean though what was the let's do it yeah like what did the sponsorship entail what yeah. was the whole process like they were just kind of like whatever you want is fine with us they're like bag you know it could just be a hat it could be a logo and i was like well i mean i don't really have any like bag or anything mm-hmm. so I was like full bag sounds great to me full bag yeah. sponsorship and then i got some a little bit of money, you know, and then also just like the exposure of then I went and did um, one of their YouTube series that they do tourist sauce and Pinehurst since so I was on that. And then, you know, I eventually got on some of the podcasts here and there. Um, but it was more just the exposure that they were able then to yeah. give me with their fan base. Yeah. And yeah, and I've just really they've built a really cool community mm-hmm. of people and golf lovers and golf nuts and I've met some really, really, some of our best, my husband and I's like best friends, we've met through just the community that they've built because mm-hmm. um, they have like an online message board and they do community meetups for going and playing golf that'll have like 40 to 50 people and they just go play golf at a couple courses in an area. And yeah, so that's kind of what I've gotten out of it um, is just the the exposure and then just the friendships that I've made, not just with the guys themselves, but the people yeah. in their community and the fans and yeah part of the community. yeah i mean i almost every almost every event like there i have like a couple of people who are fans of knowing blowing up that like just come watch me that like otherwise That's i probably so wouldn't have anybody pro- yeah. watching <laughs> do you feel almost like that was a little more pressure or did that motivate you to work harder i mean i can imagine you're probably already working your tail yeah. off to begin with but how did that extra exposure kind of affect your mentality and yeah i'd say put it a little bit just because i I'm a people pleaser. I want people to like me. And so like, you know, not playing well isn't fun Yeah, because it's, you know, my husband is always like, you know, he has a bad day at work. You know, no one really knows about it, but I have a bad day at work and people can go and look online and see that I had a bad day at work. Stays there forever. Yeah. Yeah. It never goes away. (laughs) No, but you kind of get used to it. I definitely like in the beginning, I feel like at times, like it would put a little bit of pressure just because I want to do well. I want them to talk about me on the Mm -hmm. podcast. I want them, you know, the fans to be rooting for me and, you know, that's fun. But at the same time, it's like, those aren't the people that really matter. You know, Mm -hmm. it's my husband, it's my family, it's my, my circle that that's who, that's who matters. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's get into the past couple of years. And then also you had your highest finish last year. Mm-hmm. At what, which event? Was it the uh, BMW or the Canadian Open? The Canadian Open. Mm-hmm. So tell us about tell us about that week and and how you're hitting it. Obviously yeah. it was fantastic, but tell us about it. 
Yeah, it was a really cool week. Um, in the pro-am, I got paired up with the son of the chief of the band, which is so the First Nation that mm-hmm. the golf course is on tribal land or the Musqueam band. Mm-hmm. And so I got paired with the son of the chief and his cousins in the pro-am. So that was really cool. So we got close with the chief and his wife and like went out to dinner with them one night. And so that was like a really cool start to the week, mm-hmm. just learning about the Musqueam band and the golf course. And like we were on like the 11th tee box and... They're like, oh, yeah, this was my great grandfather's land. This is where his his longhouse was, like overlooking That's this so beautiful. Yeah. yeah. So that was a really, really cool start mm-hmm. to the week. And I'd never been to Vancouver. and It's beautiful. My husband was there. And yeah, I didn't play great the first round, actually. But just kind of was like it wasn't as bad as the score looked. Mm-hmm. Like I played pretty solid. And then I was hitting it really good starting that next day. And I played really great on Friday and moved way up the leaderboard. Mm-hmm. And just kind of kept going. I was putting really well. Just kind of everything was going really, really well. The course suited me really well. Firm greens and, you know, you have to be really, really precise in where you hit the golf ball. And that's kind of one of my strengths. And so that's kind of, yeah, it just, it just was a great week overall. Yeah. And what was, what were some, did you notice any changes in the energy that you had that week and, and being in contention and, and, you know, just sleeping <laughs> was your sleep a little bit less yeah my husband weekend? yeah my husband and I had kind of gotten in this routine starting right after the British which is kind of where I hit a little kind of a low in the wow. year I missed a couple didn't play well at the British but it, it was interesting I kind of felt like I was really really close um I know I'd missed the cut but I was like man I can just tell like yeah, right around the corner feel it and so we had started you know just discussing post round after either in the morning before my next round or whatever, just having a little bit of a check-in, like, where are you at? How are you feeling? Mm-hmm. What did you do well yesterday? What t- could you have done? What did you do bad? What mm-hmm. could you, or not bad, but what could you have done better yeah. yesterday? And we started just doing these check-ins and I don't know, it was just nice to kind of be like, hey, I could have just done this just a little bit better. And like, well, what could you have done that fix it instead? Mm-hmm. And as soon as we started doing those, I just kind of got started getting a lot more in tune during the rounds if I would start feeling, you know, a little anxious or a little just quick sometimes yeah. out of rhythm, like being able to express it and get out of it yeah. quicker. Yeah. Now, so let's go back to, <laughs> you said that you started to really pay attention to going to the gym and your yeah. nutrition back mm-hmm. in 2019. Mm-hmm. What changed mm-hmm. then and how does that play a role now? Yeah. So I didn't work out at all <laughs> for pretty much the first two years, like never went to the gym, not at all just would practice and play and I would lose like a lot of distance throughout the season. Interesting. And I just threw up. Yeah. I mean, almost a full club throughout the season wow. I would lose. And which is frustrating. Yeah. And, you know, when you can't depend on certain yardages. And exactly. Yeah. And so, and my, my, my coach, so my coach's husband, her, he is my swing coach mm-hmm. and he kind of came to me at that point and was like, Hey, I really understand strength training and what it takes to become a, to build up an athlete. Let me help you pretty much. And so I was like, okay, let's do it. So we started working out three days a week that off season. And I mean, I was very, very, I remember the first one I went to, I like was in the car and my arms were just like shaking. Like he had me do all these like bench presses. And I was like, I almost like couldn't like hold on to the steering wheel. My arms hurt like, so bad. I ever <laughs> use these muscles before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and but yeah, so that's kind of what started it, you know, three days a week for about, and I started picking up distance that I hadn't had. And he also kind of got into speed training and what that entailed in terms for driving and getting up your club head speed for the driver. And yeah, I picked up probably about, I lost about 15 to 20 pounds that, that off season and picked up probably 15 to 20 yards off the tee mm-hmm. and got a lot of my speed back. And then just kind of kept going throughout the year, mm-hmm. you know, going to the gym during the week is you think like, oh, you don't want to go get sore. You don't want to do this, which you can still go get a lift in and not be sore yeah. and still maintain mm-hmm. your strength from the beginning of the year, which I didn't really understand that. I was like, no, you don't want to go Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or even like Thursday or Friday because you don't want to be sore. Yeah. But you can go get, and it just tells your body like, hey, I need these this muscle still. Exactly. It like helps activate it yeah. for the day. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's like, hey, I don't need to lose this. Yeah. And helps it recover, actually, Mm -hmm. if anything. And so that's kind of just that understanding of like, no, you still need to go do that. Yeah. How does, I don't, you you mentioned nutrition Mm -hmm. and being on the road all the time. Like me as just a a person, when I go travel, Mm -hmm. nutrition goes to shit. Oh, yeah. 
Like, how are you mindful of that when, during your travel schedule? What kind of things help you yes. stay on track for the most part? I would say I'm not the best with the nutrition part of it. Um, I definitely eat for enjoyment a lot of the time. <laughs> yes, you're. I, trust me, I'm in the same um, circle of love there. Yeah, but my husband, is he quit his job right before the Asian stretch. And so he's coming out here full time kind of as like my manager, agent. Is that the start for just this year? Yeah, this year's oh, first time he's fun. done it. And he's like, kind of just been like, hey, you know, you're not having any vegetables. You're not really having any fruit. Like you really need that type of stuff. Yeah. And you're talking about how you're fatigued at times and you're mentally yeah. not in it. Like it's a really simple thing that mm-hmm. you can fix that should help that. Yeah. And so I'm this week, I'm okay. I'm making sure I can go get my fruits at breakfast and yeah. getting some vegetables at lunch yeah. and just little thing because I have no problem getting you know protein and rice yeah. or whatever or starches, but it's like no, I gotta get the fruits at breakfast. Yeah. I gotta get some. Yeah, I can totally <laughs> relate to that. It's like I have nothing against fruit. I just don't want to eat it. No, no, I just you know and I love you know I love chocolate and sweets yeah. Yeah. and you know and but it's hard. Yeah. It's hard on the road, but it's they make it really easy. I would say for breakfast and lunch, it's more the dinner that I that mm-hmm. can get me at times too. You know, I want to go. I love Shake Shack. Like yeah. Oh, yeah. When I'm on the West door, Coast, in and out. DoorDash is yeah. you know, a phenomenon, you know? <laughs> no, so, but it's definitely something I'm... Uh, I'm it, it's in a work in progress. But that's exciting that your husband's out with yes. you now full-time. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm interested to almost like circle back with you in a year and be like, okay, so how, how'd it go? Yes, yeah, so I was... What's listening. changing? <laughs> what went really well? Uh, yes, yeah, so I split up with my caddy right after China. Okay. And so he's actually... My husband's caddying for me, caddying for me last week, and he's caddying for me this week. And how did it next go week, last week? I mean, I didn't play well, but uh-huh. not to anything that he did uh-huh. at all. Um, he's very into it. I mean, he's been around it for, I mean, as long as I've been, yeah. we've been and together. He knows you're getting like the back of his hand. And he knows me like better than anybody. Yeah. And so it's more just getting like, hey, like this is how a caddy, you know, does these things. Just mm-hmm. like kind of fine tuning some stuff. But in terms of everything else, he was great. Yeah. You know, he's extremely hard worker. Mm-hmm. So he's going to be here. One of the first people here. He's going to stay late. Like he's going to put in the work. So yeah. I have no doubt about that. It's yeah. more just getting some of the intricacies of caddying. Yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. All right. So let's go through the timeline. Mm-hmm. So it's, we're, it's today. It's Tuesday. We're at Seville Country Club. Take us through like a typical Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of tournament week yeah. leading up to play. So Monday can be a little tricky, but most of the time it just depends on if I travel on Sunday night or Monday morning. Yeah. But typically it's going to be a lighter day, probably more just some practice, maybe get nine holes in. But mm-hmm. if I've seen the golf course before, I'm probably not. It's probably yeah. just going to be some putting, some chipping, mm-hmm. try to get a lift in on mm-hmm. Mondays and travel is really what a Monday would be. Yeah. Today is Tuesdays are always like the biggest days. Yeah. I would say a lot of practice, putting, chipping, range work, and then definitely go out on the golf course mm-hmm. for nine holes at least. Yeah. Um, whichever nine I'm not playing in the pro am. Mm-hmm. And then after the nine holes, probably some more, a little bit more practice after as well. And when does equipment kind of check in come into play? Yeah, I kind of I've been playing the same shaft for like four years in my irons. So probably like once a month to once to every like month and a half, I'll get my wise and my lofts checked. Mm-hmm. Um, and if that would is probably either on Monday or Tuesday, I'm going to be getting yeah. those with uh, the ping rep. Mm-hmm. And but I mean, everything else, you know, if anything new comes out, I'll try it. Yeah. Give it a try. I'm always willing to try. But if it's not better, I'm not going to put exactly. it in. And then Wednesdays are pro-am days. Mm hmm. And, you know, I'm starting to be in the pro-amps more and more. Yeah. And so before, pre this year, I, it would probably just be a lighter day because I probably wouldn't be able to get out on the golf course. But since I'm going to be in the pro-amps now, it's going to be a little bit of practice. Again, more putting and chipping, just getting a use for getting used to the green speeds and how the the ball reacts around the greens. Yeah. And then go to the pro-am. Yeah. Have you played Seville? Have you played the course yet? Uh, no, I have not. I got in... Sat. I missed the cut last week, and I drove. We drove from LA on Saturday, and just practiced out at Superstition on oh, yeah. Sunday, mm-hmm. and then came and practiced yesterday. But my husband, so Ping is here yeah. in Phoenix, and I'm on Ping staff. And so yeah. my husband went and got fit for all, all oh, of course, bag of clubs Monday, of Monday morning. Yeah. yeah, so that was actually really fun. It was yeah. fun. You know, he's yeah. been asking for years, and I'm finally able to get it yeah. get it done since we're here, and he's he's here oh, too. That's great. And it was actually really fun yeah. getting him, watching him get all the attention for it and stuff because uh-huh. oh, a lot God, of the times it's it. all about me oh yeah. yeah and so it was really fun for him like, uh-huh. and Bubba Watson was out there so that was really cool oh that is fun so I got to watch Bubba hit some drives which was pretty sweet uh, uh, I'm sure that was probably a yeah. treat no yeah. for sure it was a lot of fun yeah 
Okay, let's finish up with you competed last week. You missed the cut. Mm-hmm. Give me three good things about last week and one thing you're working on going into this week. Three good things. My husband and I communicated very okay. well on the golf right. course, like which it. was we we we're still married, <laughs> a, which is a good thing. <laughs> I swear, I'm going to be just checking in with you throughout the year. Like, how's it going? (laughs) For sure. Um, I didn't play great. I would, like I said, on, on Friday, um, but I played pretty solid. I came back through, I didn't start very well on Thursday, Mm -hmm. but I, I was two over through four, but I was able to get it back to even. Mm -hmm. And I bogeyed the last, but overall I kind of, I could, I've had, I've had a tendency to kind of spiral at times when yeah. things don't go my way. Oh. And so I was able to kind of get through it pretty quickly and mm-hmm. not, not let that happen yeah. on Thursday. So that'd be another one. And I mean, those greens are tough. I mean, they're Palos Verdes is Poana greens and they're fast and there's a lot yeah. going on. And so they're just, overall I putted really good. Yeah. I would say, um, I don't think the stats necessarily would say that, but I didn't feel yeah. that bad about yeah. some of my putting. Absolutely. So what going into this week are you going to work on a little bit? Um, yeah, some chipping for sure. I would say I didn't prep much aware around the greens as much as I should have last week. And again, they were really firm and a lot of rough and uneven lies. So I don't think that there's that much of that out here. Yeah. Thankfully, it seems pretty, pretty wide open off the tee from what I've heard, but the strength of my game is my iron play. And I think that's what's going to, you're going to need to have that this week. So I mean, great. Mm-hmm. Well, best of luck this week. Thank, Thank you. you so much for taking the time to chat with me. Mm-hmm. And, um, I just, I just can't wait to follow your journey. Yeah. Thanks for having me. It was yeah. a lot of fun. Thanks Lauren. Mm-hmm.